Jones, Indiana Jones, Indiana Jones. It's a podcast about Indiana Jones. Every movie, one minute at a time. Indiana Jones, Indiana Jones, minutes. Welcome back to the Indiana Jones Minute, the daily podcast in which we get right to the heart of Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, one thalamus at a time. I'm Pete Mummert. (laughs) I'm Tom Taylor. I'm Jerry Porter. And we're joined once again by the host of the Sully Baseball Daily Podcast, Paul Sullivan. Thanks for coming back, Paul. Hey, it's uh, any time to talk about monkey brains, you got me. (laughs) You You had me at monkey brains. (laughs) <laughs> and fortunately, we are here for the perfect minute to talk about monkey brains. It's minute 47, which begins with a monkey head being lovingly placed in front of each dinner guest and ends with Willie telling Indy that he couldn't possibly have anything she wants. Well, this minute calls to mind the famous vegetarian mantra, I don't eat anything that has a face. <laughs> and here, you know, dessert definitely has a face, and one of the monkeys has this impossible to ignore overbite. <laughs> and like another one's countenance is frozen in regret. And, you know, I wondered if that might encourage swapping desserts with your neighbor. Like, I'll trade you my furrowed unibrow monkey for your damn I left the stove on faced monkey. Because <laughs> yeah. they're all kind of a little bit different, and like one's eyes are really beady. Yeah, okay. like, do you think kids collect them and they trade them afterwards? Like, oh, I got a beady eye. Oh, I got an overbite. <clears throat> like, one's nose is really sort of uh, pushed in and, and really kind of tiny. Well, I'm wondering <laughs> if the monkey's, you know, disposition <clears throat> when it died will affect the flavor of the brains or something. I wonder like if, if one you... Of them is, like, worried... <laughs> You know? If you take the heads, it's like looking for a cantaloupe. Do you look at that? No, 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 that's the wrong expression. You got they're on like a big like basket of monkey heads that you're holding them up. Ah, <laughs> oh, no, no, that's a good overbite. When you got a good overbite, that gets good, yeah. good brains. You put that in there, like plucking the tops. Yeah, but like, yeah. like, can you taste regret? I like can. one yeah, of them has totally. a face. Yeah, one of them has a face, and it, it's like it, it's sort of remorseful. Yeah, yeah like that one's a little sour. <laughs> you're gonna have bad dreams tonight. Well, maybe you, you like know, that. Maybe it's like you you look for the 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 worried, concerned one with a little regret because you like that sort of you know that that the tang of regret. Maybe that's a good <laughs> dessert, you know, flavoring. I always thought Ar- maybe Arby's new slogan should be "Taste Regret" or something like that. You know. <laughs> <laughs> now, of course, this scene takes place. From yesterday's show, I was talking about how you had Charter Lal sort of basically calling out Indy for, you know, being, you know, implying they're a bunch of thugs and savages and everything. And then you have them <laughs> eating monkey brains and uh, mm-hmm. kind of totally. Ba-dum-ba. And of course, they and they put down a monkey brain in front of Indy and Mr. Grady from the Overlook Hotel and Charter Lal. So it's like the one time I think you see them kind of looking like, ooh, I'm having some too. Um, and it kind, of yeah. cut, it kind of counteracts everything Charter Lal was saying. We are not savages. Now eat the brain of this monkey. <laughs> <laughs> it died with regret. Eat it. Although Blumbert, <laughs> Blumbert is cracking up. like It looks like he's kind of cracking up as the monkeys put down in front of him. Like He well, kind he of seems to be having a good time. I think Philip Stone can't believe he... He's on vacation. Yeah, (laughs) Philip Stone has been on probably his 15th day of being paid on this movie, and he has three lines. I'd be smiling, too. (laughs) He's like like Kubrick would have me here for a month and a half and working my tail off, but (laughs) Spielberg has me sitting here. I have no lines. They put a monkey head in front of me, and the check clears, you know? (laughs) (laughs) So there there is a... uh, as, well, do you guys have anything more about the actual monkey brain part? Well, isn't it, isn't I do, it? yeah. Oh, okay. I, I fainted last night when I heard the scalps coming off. <laughs> oh. yeah, yeah, that's like as disgusting as the rucksuckle punch yeah. from Raiders of the Lost Ark. It's like this hollow sculp. It's like, it's like skull and pulp mixed yeah. together. Sculp. Cool. I don't know what Ben Burt used for that, but it was perfect. Monkey brain. Oh, that's a good question. He was, he was actually yeah, a monkey. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> he pulled off a band-aid. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't the... the and it was like... Get... 
It was like whipped cream and like raspberry custard or something like that. Yeah, it's inside. probably actually delicious. Yeah, oh, yeah it looks I think cool. it was. I think it looks great. If you could get, if there's yeah. no hair in it, I would have some now. <laughs> <laughs> well, and when when the one guy shovels it into his mouth, it does like the, it has the same sound effect that when Willie kind of had to eat the bugs or whatever off the mm. banana leaf for the you know the yeah, quote, yeah. gross local village cuisine, it does that like. Yeah, let me see if I can do it. Oh, that's pretty good. Wow. That's how Ben Burt did it. Yeah. yeah, that's how Ben Burt did it. And like he puts in his mouth and it's just this extra, you know, kind of yeah. uh-huh. disgusting sound. And you want the, the perfect <laughs> cap that the scene needed. You know, I, for, because of this scene, I thought this is what Indian food was like for a long time in my life. I, I love Indian food now. I can't get enough of Indian food now. But... You know, and we've got yeah. some really, really good f- Indian food up here in Silicon Valley. But it's like for years and years, I think, like, oh, I'm going to order the snake surprise. You know, it's like no, no, it's actually, <laughs> yeah. or, you know, order the, uh, you know, order a, a nice tikka. You know, it's, it's fine. Yeah. Well, and as we discussed, you know, the the irony here is so much of Indian cuisine is actually vegetarian. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. I wonder if there's a whole lost generation of Indian food diners, like that they all grew up watching this movie and everyone's like, I don't don't want to, I don't want to go there. (laughs) (laughs) Right. No, thanks. Our monkey brains, is that vegan? And does that, does that count as vegan? I was going to ask that, but then I thought it sounded silly, but then you asked. And so it sounds cool. There you go. (laughs) (laughs) Like, I don't know, like, like his brains meat. I don't know. Does that count as meat? Yeah, I think it's brains are meat. (laughs) I think it probably is. See, I felt silly. Yeah. Well, you should. That's fine. (laughs) Brains are meat. How come Sully asked, but now I'm getting yelled at? Well, I mean, he's the guest. (laughs) All right. It's like, yeah, it's like when your friend comes over and breaks the window or the table and your mom yells at you. Yeah. 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 (laughs) I was being sarcastic. I was being sarcastic. the host. Yeah. <laughs> and I <laughs> felt for it. I was being sarcastic, but if you were actually yeah. asking it, then Tom, you, you need to... You need some help, man. Yeah. I don't understand that the brain is actually meat. That's not a flower, you know. It's it's it's, 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 it's no, it's not a flower. But I mean, it's like it's part I mean, of your you know, part of your body. Of, it's an I organ, guess so. like a stomach lining. Is that meat? I don't yes, know. it's yes. tissue. Like it's okay. tissue. Yes, stomach so lining would be meat. Any part of your own body that you would eat, it would be. It would not be. I guess none of it's vegetables. It's tripe. Right? It's tripe. <laughs> stomach lining is tripe. Okay, keep going. Like, yeah. We have the name of the. We have the name of this. Ep- we have the name of this episode. Stomach lining is tripe. <laughs> That's gross. <laughs> Don't. Oh my god. I mean, think sp- about that. Let me ask you this: Is there anything on your body that's actually a vegetable? <laughs> <laughs> like if you were on a desert island, and you had to like, there's a Stephen King story like that where he's like, he's, he's a surgeon, he starts to eat his own fingers and stuff, and it's like, you know, so yeah, yeah, you really wouldn't get a, any uh, any vegetable or any fiber. It's a Stephen King story. It's a Stephen King story. That should tell you everything you need to know. <laughs> that should that yeah. should have told me right now. <laughs> yeah, there's right. meat. <laughs> no. All right. And for the listeners at home that can't see, here in the studio, Jerry has been giving Tom that you're insulting them and embarrassing me look for about 45 seconds. <laughs> I wasn't saying I wasn't going to eat it. I was just asking if I should. <laughs> That's hilarious. So um, then we get, oh. Willie has her, her special kind of fainting spell here, and her head seems to hit an anvil. Like, she just really <laughs> yeah, does. Like, nails her head on something. That is pretty good. And, and if you there's a if you listen closely when she falls back, there's actually a man Rah! sound <laughs> that has nothing to do with Willie. Like she doesn't she doesn't say it. She doesn't mouth it. Her lips don't move. It's just one of those like thrown in things that makes no sense. Except it's supposed to be like, oh my God, there's somebody fainting, and it, it's actually a man's voice. And he's like, it's like a little kind of half yell. He kind of goes, Aah! yeah, yeah. Yep. He saw the uh, little Tweety birds coming out of her head when she hit her head, and he was surprised. And he went, Aah! I'm sure. So we've got at, at this point. I, I, I was gonna, okay, I was gonna cool. weigh in for something here because uh, I'm sure a lot of people have given their thoughts on Kate Capshaw's performance and Willie Scott in general, 
and uh, I'm I want to I'm gonna I'm gonna weigh in on this particular topic right now. Please do. Um, as a kid, I as a kid I couldn't stand her because I loved Marion. And yes. who the hell was this person? You know, she was a you know proxy of Marion, and this is what you got. And I didn't find her to be funny. Uh, and she also like let's face it, the minute that Indy drinks the antidote, she has no purpose in the story. There's no reason for her to get on yeah. that plane <laughs> because all she knows about Indy is he tried to murder her. You know, <laughs> so that's you know <laughs> that he stick he, he tries to murder her in the club in China, and oh, I, now I got to tag along with him on an airplane. No, stay with Dan Aykroyd <laughs> and Lao Shea, right. and there's no reason for her to be there. Um, and so that's, when someone's annoying and superfluous, that's that Jar Jar sort of Venn diagram that that she meets. <laughs> You're not um, the first person to uh, invoke that Gungan and reference to. Uh, yeah, to we, we went down this river. <laughs> but we went down this alone. river. But one, th- one thing I will say, rewatching the film from beginning to end. Um, there's two things that struck me about it. First of all, from the beginning, it was clear that Spielberg was like, okay, everyone, Marianne ain't here, but here's who we have now. And they give her her best moment at the start. You know, they're yeah. doing the, the where mm-hmm. she gets to be looking glamorous and beautiful and singing and doing all the stuff. It's like she's in her element at that point. And, and then... You know, I don't know. I just the stuff she says isn't that funny in China. But the thing that I noticed is that she. One thing you can't say about Kate Capshaw is that she doesn't phone this in. She gives everything. She <laughs> yeah. screams. She falls off goddamn elephants. She's <laughs> dangled over lava. She'll do sort of you know physical comedy, whether or not it's funny or not. It's kind of like it's she's trying her best. And of course she's like, you know, I, I remember one of the early episodes, she's, so one of you said, like, I think she did this part because she wanted to show her singing. She did this part because I'm going to be in an Indiana Jones film and no one knows who the hell I am. <laughs> you know, this is my yeah. chance. <laughs> that was her main motivation for being in this film. And to say, okay, this could be, you know, a big kind of star making thing. And she puts her back into it. And, I kept thinking about my biggest problem is her performance just seems out of place. Like if you p- took her performance and you put it in Victor Victoria, <laughs> she would probably fit in that movie. But if, <laughs> yeah. If, yeah. if you take Leslie Ann Warren, who's one who got an Oscar nomination for that film and she's great in that movie, and you put her in and give the same performance. In Temple of Doom, you'd be like, what the hell is Leslie Ann Warren doing? Because she just seems out of place. She seems like there's this weird sort of Blake Edwards performance taking place in the middle of an Indiana Jones film. Where yeah. we're used to, Karen, you know, we our first thing being Karen Allen, being someone who's tough, who could stand up to Indy, but still is really sexy and really a great, you know, every girl wanted to be Marion. No girl wanted to be Willie Scott. <laughs> right. And right, I think right. that that element is, from the beginning, she was screwed because you're, you're taking over for Marion. And mm-hmm. to their credit, mm-hmm. and to the credit for this whole film, they said, "All right, we're not just going to remake Raiders. We're going to literally open with a musical number saying anything goes. That's we're yeah. saying anything's going to go in this film. And even him getting on the airplane, he's no longer. That's not an escape. He's still in trouble. So we're going to do everything slightly different in this film. Uh, and I admire that courage in a sequel or a prequel or whatever the f- <laughs> this is. But um, <laughs> but the fact that Willie." Just seems out of. Pl- I have no idea if Kate Capshaw is a good actress or not. Because what other film do I have to compare her to? What Dreamscape? I don't know yes, what other film she's been in. <laughs> yes, and yeah, Space Camp and Space Camp, <laughs> and then became Mrs. Spielberg. And right. so there's there's no like body of work. Because remember when the the remake of King Kong came out in '76, Jessica Lange was considered to be a joke. She's just screaming, right. oh, she, she sucks, she sucks. Now she's Jessica freaking Lang. Yeah. You know, so who knows? It, you know, she definitely tries in this film. She gives it her all in this film, and she just doesn't, she's in the wrong movie. She should be in a Pink Panther movie. 
or yeah. something like that, not in an Indiana Jones film. So yeah, that's, that's sort of my, my big well, takeaway. Well, yeah, is that the she, yeah? Well, go, well, go yeah, ahead, just, Tom. I, I, I just agree that she. Uh, my my big surprise. Yeah, I went into this thinking like, oh yeah, Willie, she sucks. I'm just gonna have to deal with it. But uh, yeah, not only are there more moments than I thought there were where she doesn't bug the hell out of me, but I'm consistently seeing. Oh, I actually like Kay Capshaw. She's great. She's doing an awesome job. She just doesn't have much to work with. She's she's doing an awesome job with a kind of annoying character. Yeah, I never have a problem with Kate Capshaw. Yeah. Like when we go down the Willie River, <laughs> you know the 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 rapids and whirlpools are are never Kate Capshaw yeah. as an actor, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You know the one the when I was rewatching these specific scenes, I thought of what would have been, I don't know, for me an interesting rewrite of this movie would have been instead of having it be a Maharaja, the little kid who just doesn't pay off. I mean that's a nothing character except you know you have to have a kid for short round to fight but other than that is he's a bit of a nothing character if instead if it was a, a maharani is that how you pronounce it the female answer that instead of it being this little kid it's like a princess that indy falls for but is also part of the tugi so there's some sort of some sort of thing that draws him into her and oh, yeah. he falls for her, but mm -hmm. she's part of the bad, there's bad guys, but is she under his spell? And that could lead to his, some sort of seduction where he takes the the blood instead of it just being shoved down his throat. Something where the love interest is tied into the Temple of Doom would have been a mm -hmm. hell of a lot more interesting than this person, this character who just doesn't belong in the story anymore. Yeah. Doesn't, doesn't that happen in Last I was going to say, kind of, that yeah. sounds like Elsa, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I guess so, yeah. I, guess. I don't know. I don't remember. But uh, I, guess, I guess I guess I, 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 You know what? I guess maybe they, they watched it and said, man, next time we should actually try to incorporate the love interest into the story. I don't know. <laughs> so, like, we, a lot of the talk has been about, like, some of the racism in the movie and, like, some of the, like, just the horrible reaction people have to the food scene and everything and there's a scene that was in one of the early script drafts that they cut that may have gone a long way towards making this more like palatable i think for everybody um and it's it, right after kate capshaw faints you've got indy out in the garden talking to captain bloombert and bloombert says rather bizarre menu wouldn't you say and indy says even if they're trying to scare us away a devout hindu would never touch meat and he kind of looks around and he says, makes you wonder what these people really are. And so these two guys start to get suspicious <laughs> and they realize that this isn't like something that Indians actually eat. And this, at, at yeah. this point, Bloombert, Bloombert starts to get suspicious of what's going on. And that kind of plays into that lost thread where Willie comes back and, and Bloombert tries to save her later. God, yeah, that's yeah. that is that's huge. huge. That's two scenes now that in two days that yeah. we've heard of yeah. that would have been awesome in this movie and made a lot of sense. But then the scene goes and on and utilize and utilize two very good actors who are reduced yeah. to basically, yeah. you know, completely forgotten figures. Oh my God! But then the scene plays on. It, it maybe it would have been good if they cut it there. Um, the <laughs> Maharaja comes outside and Shorty's kind of playing with Indy's whip. And the Maharaja tries to grab it, and Shorty gets really angry, and he says, nobody touches Dr. Jones's whip. And Indy kind of chastises him, and the Maharaja asks Indy to show him how the whip works. And so there's like a servant lighting a candle, and Indy whips the candle out of his hand, and then he turns around and whips the flower out of a dancing girl's hair. And everyone's like really amazed. And so the Maharaja wants to try it, and Indy gives him the whip, and he snaps it, and it comes back and cuts his cheek, like it hits him in his own cheek and cuts mm -hmm. it and shorty starts cracking up and like laughing at him and they get into a fight like shorty and the maharaja fight right there <laughs> and they're fighting over the whip and the maharaja's eyes start to glow like this crazy evil glow and and shorty's the only one that sees it so at this point shorty knows that the maharaja's evil but no one believes him all great scenes yeah, i'm glad all they cut great that. i think no i, I because because later Later, they, you know, you know, they had a scene that was cut out where you find out that, like, you know, what cures everyone is fire. And yeah. that was cut out of it. And yeah. it's like, all these scenes are like, yeah, these would be, uh, these would be good to, these would have helped the, uh, what we call in some movies, the plot. 
<laughs> right. Because all the stuff sort of just happens the way it is now. Like, you just sort uh-huh. of see the yeah. Maharaja as a possessed guy, and you see Charlal as a guy, and, yeah, so and this he gets one, yeah, hit and with fire, actually, and, yeah. And this makes more sense why he's he's more interested in exploring the, the palace later, because he sort of suspects that there's bad stuff going on already. And it's, yeah. like... Yeah. yeah, not just a that rogue. sounds intriguing. Well, it also would have you know it would have exonerated this in, this entire yeah. indictment yeah, exactly. of Indian cuisine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah just <laughs> I mean, that one like, like those. If they only kept in those two lines, it would have completely exonerated this scene. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> so yeah, maybe this is a one time we do want a director's like a where George Lucas goes back in and fixes it. No, no, no. Let's All go right. back and add more to Star Wars. Let's, let's bring that back to the <laughs> shop. Yeah. Let's right. put Big CGI in T8 section 1138. Yeah, that's, what, <laughs> that's, that's a good idea. I just got sad. Yeah. And so they have a Gungan, a Gungan in American graffiti right now, you know. <laughs> well, we, we could call this movie Gungan Din. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right, everyone. Oh, this has been the Indiana Jones Minute. Uh, <laughs> Thank you for coming. All right, everyone. Don't forget to tip your waitresses. <laughs> we were going to do the whole movie, but that's it. This is the last episode. And uh, <laughs> erases from your feed. <laughs> so, so then after that scene, we, we cut back to where we, we are naturally in the movie, where Indy and Shorty are walking back towards their room. Yeah, you know, I, Indy actually says to Shorty, I think I'll just check on Willie, but I couldn't. I couldn't hear Shorty's answer. What is he? You saying? do not want to hear Shorty's answer. Oh okay, yeah, I, you do. I, I, I was watching. Okay, no, I, I've, I've, I've loved this movie since I was thirteen, and just watching this move this minute for this, uh-huh. I first. I don't know if I had never just heard what he says. His next two lines. Yeah. I don't know if I yep. just didn't hear it or it just didn't get into my head all the way. But he says, and I agree, it's hard to understand the first one. He either says, because yeah, Indy says, I'm going to go check on Willie. And Shorty says, either that's all you better do or that's all you're going to do. No, he says, that's all you better do. I listened oh to that like 20 God, times. So, I'm going to hyperventilate. But, this is but, so weird. But I see that, it, <laughs> like, the meaning you take from that, I think maybe isn't meant to be, because part of that, I wonder if that's Shorty not knowing English very well at this point and just having trouble with the line reading. Like, is he trying to say... Actually, I don't know what he's trying well, to say. Well, you know what? You could, you <laughs> could film it again. <laughs> he sounds like he's saying, if he he sounds like he's saying don't do anything with this lady. Yeah. I yeah. know what he's going to do. But I, then, I, his talk. next line... Yeah. Cre- oh, go ahead, go ahead. Creepiest line in the movie. You know, it's... it's uh, <laughs> creepiest line in the movie. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. In a movie, Tell me later what happened. Yeah, in a movie where children are whipped <laughs> by giant Pat Roach, the most disturbing part is the knowledge that not only Short Round knows that Indy is going to try to... Uh, you know, enter Willie's Temple of Doom, but he can't wait to hear about it. He can't. You're gonna, you, oh my God. you grown man, are gonna sit down with me, nine year old boy, and you're gonna tell me how you oh. are gonna. And, and knowing that he's got a history of about to get his cut off in Madagascar and everything like that, we already know <laughs> that he he stooped Abner Ravenwood's underage daughter at this point. So yeah. it's like, okay, yeah. oh man, Shorty, when I'm done, <laughs> I'm going to sit down with you, nine year old boy, and tell you all about sex. Yeah. I got and diagrams. By, and by the way, he's, got... Shorty's supposed to be seven. Yeah, he's not even nine. He's, oh, not, he's oh supposed to be seven. <laughs> and, Indy, and, and Indy's reaction isn't like, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, Drew. no, Indy says Amscray. <laughs> yeah, like you little scamp. Yeah, which is. Of course, I'm going to tell you what right. happens. Don't worry about it. And he's already uh, like loosening his tie while he's doing that. Oh, it's already like the music. Like that, bow, 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 it's already starting in the background. <laughs> You're right, I love that he actually uses pig Latin. And I actually yeah. looked that up just for the hell of it. And it, it's also known as hog Latin, <laughs> which made me really happy. And it's, it's, it's a type of parody Latin called dog Latin. <laughs> so I had a really good time last night. <laughs> well, I'm just happy we finally have like actual evidence that Indy speaks another language. <laughs> yeah. He's got some kind of Latin. But but why do you use pig Latin? You use it to actually like hide something from somebody, to be secretive, right? Amscray. 
Like, and you're like, so yeah. who is he trying to, <laughs> what kind of code, <laughs> who's he trying to hide yeah. this from? I, I mean, it should be hidden from the audience. <laughs> the whole, whole, yeah, conversation. The whole conversation. Oh, my God. It is creepy. And not, you know, two seconds prior, he's got his hand all paternalistic on, on, on Shorty's head or whatever, patting him and that kind of stuff. I can't, I don't yeah. like the, I don't like Shorty's role in this. I've said it like once a it's week. It's super I don't weird. like the parental yeah. thing. I either want him as an accomplice and he can be like, seven he, how about uh, you know adult age he can be 18 and he can vote and that's fine <laughs> he can join the marines yeah. or do whatever he needs to do he's 18 <laughs> that way he's a consenting adult see i i want to like the parental thing and sometimes i do i like the little moments that we see of it but like the rest of the movie won't let me like it because of stuff like <laughs> sure. this and because he's like you know driving cars while people are being murdered around him and well, stuff i don't mind and, the, i don't mind the car no. thing but this one seems a little bit beyond yeah, the pale yeah, we, but yeah. it's like the yeah. car thing he's an accomplice yeah i'm fine with him being an accomplice yeah because yeah. that's that's like what he grew up with like he grew up like on the rough tough streets he's probably he knows how to drive already but a seven-year-old yeah. doesn't need to know about like dr jones's nocturnal habits <laughs> What's disturbing about it is it sounds like this is not the first time that Shorty has said this. Well, <laughs> and that he actually kind of expects Indy to tell him what happened. Oh, hey, you know, remember... remember in, like, that's going to be their sleepover chat. In the, uh, in the car. Is, and is he, is he going to, like... Is he going to tell him in, like, a Dr. Seuss fashion? <laughs> yeah, the news has come in from the Valley of Venus. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh the things you can oh the things you can think remember when they were in the car driving away driving away from Lao Shea and and Club Obi-Wan and Indy is reaching into Willie Scott's dress trying to find the uh, trying to find the antidote what does Short Round say he says no time for no time for love Right, I mean, yeah. because he knows. He knows they literally don't have enough time to do the sexual <laughs> act in the, in the time allotted. Yeah, he knows. They've already been, he, he, knows, he knows how much time it takes. <laughs> yeah, he's, he already read the story, Dr. Jones and the Ooblick. <laughs> Jake the Pillow Snake. <laughs> That's actually from a Dr. Seuss book. Jeez. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> this minute took a turn. <laughs> it did. It yeah. did. This movie took a turn. Oh. Well, anyway, that, God, we're not even done with a minute, no, are we? No, because now we have Willie apparently looking through that crack between the doors <laughs> and flings the door open right as, as Indy's about to knock. Yeah, that was my question. Is she like? She opens the doors like there's nothing you you know that, that you could have that I could possibly want. Uh-huh. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. She just opened the door. She knows that he was standing there. She oh, she was waiting for him to show up so she could open the door and act like she didn't want to talk to him. And I'm like, no wonder I liked this movie a lot when I was in middle school, when I was like 13 years right. old and trying to talk to girls. And uh, I was like, oh, I guess that's the way but it is. It, you know, it's a very anti-Belloc line in the way that <laughs> there's nothing that you have that I could possibly want. <laughs> right. right. I mean, I wouldn't take anything away from you because I don't. Want. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was as as opposed to as you know that there's nothing you possess that I cannot take away. Do you think she ended up with Belloc? <laughs> yeah. Do you think that Willie Scott ended up with Belloc? Because maybe that I mean because they're broken up by Raiders, which takes place what the a year after this takes place. So do you think yeah, there's like yeah. there's yeah. like one point it's like oh hey Belloc I'm here I have I introduced you to Willie Scott uh, we uh, we I met her you know I, I tried to stab her <laughs> at a uh, club in in Shanghai <laughs> and then you yeah. know and then next thing you know she runs off with uh, she runs off with uh, Indy. I, all right, show me she runs off with uh, Belloc. Oh, that's how Indy gets rid of her. Yeah. He's like, hey, Belloc, I'd like to meet something that I possess. <laughs> Oops, oh no, come back. <laughs> Willie, please. <laughs> and Short Round is running around with Belloc. Like, tell me how it goes. You know? <laughs> yeah, tell oh. me what happened. <laughs> because Short Round's oh gone God. too. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I, don't, I don't even know if Short Round ever gets to meet Belloc. No, Short Round dies. <laughs> <laughs> and Sully's uh, head cannon. They absolutely mean. Yeah. 
<laughs> he was bitten by a mosquito and died of malaria. It was just sad. <laughs> yeah. The end. <laughs> No, I, you know, I, that was of all the things that sucked about Last Crusade and uh, not Last Crusade, uh, uh, Crystal Skull. And believe me, there is no podcast long enough to list all the things that sucked about Crystal Skull. <laughs> but uh, like, you couldn't have one scene where short rounds, like you're know, like he's at the college and all of a sudden you see his TA is short round or the yeah. wedding at the end and short round right. is there. Just yeah. a quick moment. What was Kei Hui Kwan busy that day? Did he turn <laughs> it down? I mean, did they call his agent and say, no, 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 he doesn't want to do Indiana Jones again? I mean, what? I mean, he must have been available, right? Right. I think they well, did. I know uh, that they asked, they asked Sala. They yeah. asked John Reese Davis to do exactly that, to be in the wedding. And he's like, "Oh, well, what do I do?" And they're like, "Well, you just be in the background." And like, you know, all of Indy's old folks are in the in the wedding. And he's like, "Nah, never mind. No, it's okay. <laughs> that seems really stupid. That doesn't seem like it's cool for Sala or anything. No, uh, no." So he turned it down. So maybe uh, I'm not saying they even asked, you know, Jonathan Kwan, but they should have. I agree. It yeah. would have been nice to yeah. just just prove he's alive or something. Or even he's just okay. like yeah, just like a picture on the wall or a or worried about him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Have Willie Scott be there. I guarantee you she was available. You know? <laughs> she had a connection with Spielberg. Honey, what That's are you true. doing later? Yeah, drop by work. Oh, wait. This just in, uh, Professor Christy Porter. <laughs> she heard her talking about Dr. Seuss. <laughs> uh, the monkeys match so perfectly, it's like Martha Stewart had a hand in this. Except <laughs> chilled brains following steaming soup at room temperature eels and bugs? I don't think so. <laughs> Not even if it's a tapas party and a shoulder season. <laughs> <laughs> What's a shoulder yeah, a good season? Point. <laughs> say, no, shoulder season is like kind of that in, be- in between, you know, like the summer to fall. In between maybe like, a, oh, okay. yeah, like an Indian summer, as they say sometimes in the Midwest. Sure, sure. Yeah, like in between winter and spring, a shoulder season. I'm learning something new. Listen, I, I literally asked that same question 45 minutes ago. <laughs> oh, that was big of you to admit that. Thank you, Jerry. Now, now, I just noticed one thing. We now have two straight movies where we have dead monkeys. Yeah. You know, we had a dead monkey in Raiders, and now we have a whole table of dead monkeys in oh. this one. I just, I just got like a sad gong for that. <laughs> like every one of these monkeys had a great backstory, like our friend did. Yeah. Maybe they're all Nazis. They all so we should be glad. Yeah. 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 There's a very anti monkey, these movies. <laughs> they seem very expendable to them. Oh, man. Now I'm sad. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, man, I felt this one ended like. A- this really ended on a sour note. You know, we, we started with... <laughs> it's like we chilled. ate the, re- the, we the, with, yeah. the regretful-faced monkey. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we just... <laughs> That's what it tastes like. Oh, man. Well, put yourself in short round shoes and the expectation of love is in the air and hearing all about <laughs> spring lovers. Sully, if, if people yeah. would like to find more uplifting commentary from you or... <laughs> Other projects you're working on? Uh, where might they do that? Uh, actually, there's there's two podcasts that I do that you can follow. One is um, Sully Baseball Daily, where I do a podcast every single day. I've now we're approaching episode number one thousand six hundred uh, consecutive Man. days with a new podcast. Um, and then I'm also the producer of I'm not a host of it, but I'm one of the producers of a podcast called Real Crime Profile where we talk about uh, murders and famous murder cases, and we break it down with um, uh, the Real Crime Profile team, which is consists of uh, the two former uh, FBI profilers and the casting director of Criminal Minds. And uh, we go over all these really interesting murder situations and break them down so if you're into if you're into baseball i got something for you if you're into real crime go to real crime profile as well yeah definitely i'm a i'm a regular listener of the baseball one and i could have to check out the crime one it sounds cool there you go and tom all right actually jerry uh if people wanted to talk (laughs) true crime with us (laughs) the crimes perhaps perpetrated by this film uh, or not (laughs) Where might they do that? Well, the best place to do that is to go to Facebook 
and join our Listener's Crusade. It's Indiana Jones Minute and the Listener's Crusade. And we have all sorts of uh, discussion and conversation, talk about what monkeys make you sad or what monkeys make you happy. (laughs) And by all means, please start some sort of Dr. Seuss morphed sexual title. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, and and get on there and tell us what happened. Yeah. Get a, yeah, but yeah. not if you're, let's be clear, not if you're under 18, okay? <laughs> right. Right. So what Jerry's saying is, tell me later what happened. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> oh, God. And if, if, if you don't want to do that, you could also just join us right back here later tomorrow for minute 48 of the Indiana Jones Minute. On Beyond Volvo. <laughs> if I ran the whorehouse. <laughs> <laughs> the, next, the whole night's just going to be going through Dr. Seuss books. <laughs> yeah, and then think that I saw it in the red light district. Oh, the pinks you can sink. Sorry! <laughs> uh. Horton hears a whoops! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>